Hey, welcome to Backwoods Gourmet. This morning we're going to do a little bit of bass fishing from the bank. Uh, the rain's been coming down like cats and dogs here every day, so the water's flowing through all of the water control features uh, around the around the area, and uh, I'm sure the bass are going to be stacked up. Can't wait. <music> It's going to be a uh, you know water control feature on a canal that uh, leads into one of the major lakes in the Kissimmee chain. Uh, there's hundreds of these things around the area. Some are accessible, some are not. This one is very accessible. I fished it yesterday. We did real well. Decided to bring you guys along today, give it another shot, and uh, see if they're still home. Uh, caught one yesterday about four pounds there. It was a real nice one And of course we catch anything decent. Uh, we'll probably bring it home cook it up for you when I talk about water control features This is what I'm talking about right here This one has a nice pull-off and a place you can park And uh, right over there behind it is Florida's turnpike But that water's flowing real good We'll give it a try. Right, well, I'm walking these trails out here around these places. I always keep my rod and my bait out in front of me. This has uh, saved me from being snake bit a couple of times. Uh, you can't always see the ground clearly. I don't really mow this that well or very often. But I've actually had water moccasins strike that worm. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't get me. You see that water boiling out of there. This is bringing up the bait fish and bass along with them. Four pounder came right off of that fence there yesterday. So maybe he's back there, released him. using the pink today because this is a Kissimmee chain and I've had so much luck with this color on this chain of lakes and I can't seem to cast exactly where I want to go this morning but <clears throat> I got watermelon red in my pocket can't give him a bite this There's the first one right there. He dropped it though. He dropped it. Hey, about yanked a rod out of my hand and dropped it. Yanked the heck out of it again. Drop. <clears throat> it must be bluegills. All right, so we came over to the other side. See what happens over here. The current favors this side. I'll tell you that. Oop, just pulled on it right there. Got it. First cast. I'm just laying there waiting on it. Looks like a pretty good one. Oh, yeah. Using that current. I'm gonna let him. It's two and a half, three pounder. Keep him stuck. Spunky one. Dinner. How's that, boys and girls? Three fish. Some of you guys were probably rooting for him to get back, right? I know, I know, catch and release guys. 
I'm a catch and release guy too, but I still like to eat some bass. So I've released thousands and thousands of bass in my, in my life. Another fish. Oh man, pulled off. So we got that bass back here to the Backwoods Gourmet and Outdoor Kitchen. Now we're gonna take them outside, clean them, and you know we're gonna throw them on some cast iron. Alright, so as you can see, we uh, scaled this guy. Now we're just going to go ahead and fillet him, skin on him. I cut down behind his head here. Before I cut that fillet off, though, I want to make some, some very shallow scores in the skin, about an inch apart. I don't want to really cut down into the meat. I just want that to open that skin up just a little bit. Be easy to do even since he's scaled. All right, so we got the cut behind the head. I'll come in, pressing my knife down to the backbone. Get him started here. Come up to the bottom, staying next to the backbone. Then I like to just roll my knife over, right down the top. I'll we'll have to turn him. Finish that up. Come through here, round the corner. You open them pin bones, up and over the ribs, through the pin bones. We'll just take that fillet right off. Same for the other side, which I'm, I'm much better at. That's two beautiful pieces of bass. Now you might also notice that we didn't take the pin bones out. That's because I don't want to, uh, to mess with the skin on the other side. Here, we're going to take those out after it's cooked.
All right, folks, it's been about 20 minutes since we put the bass in there. I'm gonna go in, check on it real quick. We don't, last thing we wanna do is really overcook that. That is just starting to flake. There's juice running out of it, oh my God. So, um, gonna give it maybe another five minutes. Then we're gonna pull the bass out. And then we're gonna make a little sauce with the veg. All right, so we're, uh, know our fish is done. We just wanna make a little sauce for our veg. I'm gonna go ahead, take a big spot, go right in there and pull that beautiful flake. Oh my God. That is tender, flaky, moist, and awesome. So, stir our veg down, and then we're going to rearrange these coals, what we got left, and then we're gonna make a nice sauce for the veg. Give that just a little splash of white wine. That come back up to a simmer. So these beds are cooked. We just kind of want to make a little sauce. And that thickened up with the butter and the wine. That uh, just came to a beautiful sauce. But that quick. So right now, go ahead and get our Dutch oven all over that fire. Time for the Here we go. Let's plate this up backwards gourmet style. We're going to bring our steaming hot veg. Going to kind of serve this up family style. All the veg on a nice platter. Those caramelized onions, the snow peas, mushrooms, that sauce. Oh my God. Insert smell of vision right here because. This smells awesome. All right, I'm gonna kinda roll that around the plate. I'm actually gonna, if I can get a hold of this thing and tip it up a little bit, I'm gonna get that sauce. Right out of there. All right, and here comes our, uh, our baked off bass with the skin on. I did come back and pull those pin bones out. You can feel them with your fingers and just pluck them right out of there. That's gonna be an awesome meal right there. Just for a little garnish, I got some thyme here. I'm gonna pinch a little bit of that thyme off. Strip it from the, from the stem. A couple little sprigs on top. And here we have our uh, good old Florida sour oranges. You know, we have these in the summertime. We use them like lemons. Right over the top. Hey, smell my Dutch oven. And check out our t-shirts right there on the Teespring merch shelf right below the video. So 
So thanks for watching Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do it right here to see another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up there. And for a whole playlist, cast iron Dutch oven cooking, it'll be right up there. We'll see you next time.